Hey everybody, James Stone here, president of NorCal Guides and Sportsmen's Association. Just wanted to come to you uh, all live today to talk to you about what's going on with the uh, salmon season setting process and how that's going. And we will be going to Seattle next uh, later this week, at the end of this week. And the council starts officially on Friday the 5th with the Salmon Advisory sub-panel. And then we'll move to the council process starting on April 6th, Saturday. So those of you that want to uh, comment on the written comments, you have that ability to do that um, until tomorrow, April 2nd. So you need to comment on agenda E2, E3, E4, E5, and finally E6. Uh, E2 and E6 have been the, the highest two commented items um, on so far. So you'll see that, um, but you can comment on any of the E agenda items, which are salmon, and you can only do that until tomorrow, April 2nd. And then they will stop all uh, written comments that are on uh, the website and then you will only be able to comment remotely if you uh, were to log in and sign up for comments on the day of the agenda item. I believe agenda E2 is going to be on Saturday and then agenda E6 I think is agendized for um, that following week on April 10th. I think that's Wednesday of the following week. So if you're kind of uh, trying to say, oh, well, I want to make comments, you know, verbally, uh, you should kind of pencil those dates, Saturday and Wednesday. And you can go on pcouncil.org and you can follow along the agendas there. Um, I'll have our gal to, uh, post it up too so that everybody can find it there. Um, but there's some misinformation going on um, about there, um, you know, what's going on with the salmon season setting process. And there are a few individuals that are, um, you know, kind of misrepresenting the facts that are out there. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm at least educating everybody and just bringing you the facts. Um, our organization is going to have a board meeting tonight and we'll be taking our official position um, tomorrow. Um, and we will make comments uh, written on behalf of that. And then I will be doing it in person in Seattle as well as uh, a PowerPoint presentation. I might do a few PowerPoints. So, and we'll put those PowerPoints up on our website afterwards also so that if you miss the council process, you can at least follow along uh, with us and uh, the science and this, the, the, the data and the numbers um, of where we're kind of at. So I hope everybody's doing well. Um, thank you all for joining and I'll kind of walk you through this process here in about five or 10 minutes, we'll talk real quick about this process. But where we're at is that the Sacramento River is in deep trouble. We had the lowest amount of jacks return last year in 2023. 2023 was a full closure. So nobody fished, uh, nobody in the ocean fished, nobody in the rivers fished. And we had the worst jack two-year-old return. What that number does, everyone, is when you have a low two-year-old return that's really low, that's the number that's used to calculate next year's return is the jack count, the two-year-old count. However many two-year-olds you have goes into a linear algorithm, I believe, that is then has an acceptable deviation that uh, is done according to how accurate it is, which it's not been that accurate over the past few decades. Um, so last year, and that tells you how much abundance you have. Well, last year they said that we had 169,000 fish out there minus the 5,000 credit cards. So it was like, if we close the seasons, you'll get 165,000 fish back. And we said, no, we won't. And we closed it. And then they said, we got about 133,000 fish back. And we know that there was, you know, at least, uh, 15,000 plus strays from the McCallamy in the uh, American, we know that there was a few thousand strays from McCullamy in the feather, and we know there were, you know, hundreds of fish from the McCullamy in the Sacramento River. 
So what that tells us is that the real numbers were definitely below um, what they reported. They reported 133,000 was their guesstimate on their expansions of their carcass data. Because normally they do code wire tags, carcass data, surveys, and they do the CVAS, which is the angler survey. Well, there was no anglers. There was no commercial. There was no ocean. So the only data they really had uh, was the returns, the dead carcasses that they could find, and then the hatchery returns and the code wire tags to do their expansions of how many fish they believe actually returned. They said 133,000. So on their numbers, if all of their numbers are perfect and accurate, that's a 22% error rate. So the model was off 22% last year with full closures. So that's a fact. That's the reality. 22%. Now we look at all the years that we were open, the average error rate was 31 minimum up to 41. It was in that range depending on what data set and what years you used um, and looked at. But I mean, if you looked at a smaller set of data, it was 31%. You looked at a larger range all the way back to 08, I think it was 41 on average. So you're talking that that's what the model inaccuracies are on our prediction. Our prediction is there's 213,622. So if we just said, okay, well, the, the season's closed. We close the season right now, no fishing again. The model's expected to be off 22% again. Just like last year, right? I mean, that's a fact. Well, that means there's only 166,625 fish. NOAA Fisheries told us that we have to have 180,000 fish back. That was the guidance from the federal government. We need 180,000 fish to rebuild these stocks. So what are we talking about? That's where I'm confused. I'm a college educated man, but when you tell me that you have a model and it's off on these numbers every single year, and then on a closed year, it proves again to be off. And now we sit there and say, we have this number, but let's go fish on a stock. So I'm a little confused on that. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm leaning 100% personally towards Alt-3 because if we don't do Alt-3, personally, I feel that we're going to be in big trouble. We already might be. And some people are already saying that. They're already saying, we're already in trouble. The fish is going to get listed. Let's just go kill as many as we can. It's our last chance. That's a... And... There are individuals that are out there and there's a group out there that is advocating for this to open the fisheries. All right, I'm back. I lost half of you. I'm um, sorry about that. I lost three quarters of you. I'm, uh, I'm still here. Sorry about that. Internet issues. Um, so um, I'll stay in one place and stop moving. So, you know, there is a few individuals and there's a group that is pushing, you know, to open the season alt one because they want to go fishing. And I think everyone wants to go fishing. I mean, who doesn't want to go fishing? Everyone wants to go fishing. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, not even an argument. So, you know, there are people out there that are like, Oh, you don't want to go fishing or yeah. Wh why, why not? You know, well, we all want to go fishing. So let's just clear that up right, right out of the gate. I want to go salmon fishing. Everyone that I know wants to go salmon fishing. Last year, I had to go to Alaska to get my salmon. So um, it's very frustrating when we can't go obtain food. It's very frustrating that we can't go out and catch our fish consistently. But this all leads to management decisions. This leads to this process of the council and the fact that we just got bombarded by, you know, 386 comments just dropped on agenda E2. Um, all, all of them advocating 
from a mass email that got sent out to everyone to copy and paste and to, you know, put it on this agenda item of how much the public wants to go fishing. And all that's doing is it's just sending the wrong message to people. It's just not reality. And I mean, can we go fishing? Will the, will, will the model allow us to go fishing? Yes. The model will allow us to go hang ourselves. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it's like saying that, um, you know, we need to put, you know, barriers and ropes and nets under bridges because we don't want people to jump. Well, you know, I mean, there are no safeguards here, folks. There are no safeguards on this process. There are a few individuals that have the ability to vote this in. And there are a few individuals that are advisory bodies that have the ability to make recommendations based on science and to educate everyone and the general public of what's going on so that you all can make the best decisions for you and your families. I'm not going to tell you what to say. I'm not going to tell you, even though my personal belief is one thing, I'm not going to go tell you to go copy and paste my email and go put it up there just to show that everyone wants to go fishing. I mean, we all want to go fishing. I mean, it's not even a question. So I, I just... That's where I'm so lost on the messaging that, that we're doing as a fishing community is that we are sitting there selling BS. We're selling BS to our membership and people that we need to go open a fishing season based on faulty models, low abundances, and record low, record low jack counts, which means 2024 is going to be the worst return on the Sacramento River in the history of the Sacramento River. There's, we don't know how many, but if you look at the jack numbers, it, 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 it's going to be like two, three, four thousand, maybe five thousand fish total for all of Coleman and all of the upper basin. I mean, like less than five thousand fish. I mean, that's what it models at roughly. I mean, now there could be more that lived, but based on the jack numbers, which is the way that the government calculates the next year, 2024 looks really terrible in the Sacramento River. So do we take the chance? Now that feather looks pretty, pretty okay. Probably 40, 50, 60, 70,000 fish out there. The American looks okay. Probably 20, 30,000 fish out there. The McCallamy? Of course, there's lots of fish from the McCallamy, but the McCallamy is not managed by the Pacific Fisheries Management Council. It is its own watershed. It used to get managed by the council before the rivers dried up and the San Joaquin went to nothing. And then we had to rebuild and we started rebuilding. And then the McCallamy River became the hub for enhancement programs for the salmon stamp. The commercial anglers pay for the majority of those McCallamy fish. The commercial fleet pays for those. And on top of that, the department pays for those for enhancement recreational fishing. But they don't count. Are they out in the ocean? Yes. There's probably 50 to 80,000 of them out there, minimum. But they don't count towards the management of the Sacramento River. Yes, right there, you have somebody that just commented right there. You don't want an ESA listing on the fall run. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to say your name, but you're absolutely correct because I get in trouble if I say names on live videos anymore. So I'm not allowed to say any names anymore. Um, so you're going to hear me be very vague when I refer to any groups or people or government because there's no truth anymore. It's all gone. You want to hear truth? Go to sportsmanstruth.com or find me on podcast. You'll hear truth. And there's going to be a lot of it coming in May. 
and I've got a lot of episodes going to launch because it, the truth needs to come out. It's disgusting. It's dirty. And the management that's currently transpired and the people that have been in power for making the management decisions based on our salmon on state, federal, government, and council bodies have basically allowed us to give us enough rope to hang ourselves. And we hung ourselves all the way through COVID. And now everyone's going, what happened? Well, we were screaming at the top of our lungs in 2017, 2016. Where were, where was everybody? Oh, well, there's tons of fish in the ocean. Well, yeah, there's a lot of McCallamy fish that don't count. You're seeing Klamath fish. That doesn't count for the Sacramento. It counts for the Klamath. You're seeing Trinity fish. You're seeing feather fish. You're seeing a lot of trucked fish that have high survival. But the main river that normally is the bulk of our fishery, and in the old days, those of you that remember the million abundances in the ocean, that was from the Sacramento River. 400, 500,000, 600, 700,000 abundances were from the Sacramento River main stem, people. 200 to 700,000 spawners a year, minimum. And now we're sitting over here fighting over every last tail and recommending that we should go open a fishery when we know there's only 166,000 fish out there. With model air, that's what it says. 213 is not real. 166, probably more real. My guess is 140 to 170, 140 to 180 is probably real. And we're being told to send home 180. But what's being told to people is, oh, we don't have to make 180 by law. We don't have to make 180. We just got to make 122. But that's where the smoking mirrors and the people are starting to realize that, you know, why are all these failures? Why have they happened? You know, I'm getting commercial anglers calling me. I'm getting ocean anglers, tons of ocean guys at Fort Bragg and Bodega and San Francisco calling me. Marin, why is all this, you know, kind of just all just tumbled on top of us? And it's very frustrating for a lot of people. Well, I get it. I mean, I, I didn't think I was going to understand salmon like I do now, but this is my full-time job. I work on salmon every single day of my life. Every day. And that's all I do. So it's it's a unique position because there's no one else that really does that on the same issue, on different issues. I work on all the ocean issues, the harvest. I work on the management. I work on the hatcheries. I work on the rivers. I work on the water. I work on local. I work on the ramps. I work on the sediment. I work on the habitat. I work on all of the issues. And so I, work, I, sit, I go to all the groups and I go to all the different people and committees and I'm hearing all of it. So I get a a good 360 degree view of all of this. And what it all comes down to is, you know, I mean, this year it all comes down to is there's a few people that are basically lying to people. I mean, we, we went in there in March and we tried to provide three alternatives that worked in the model. I mean, you know, yeah, it, we made it work. We could open the ocean for a 10,000 quota. They were only going to give us 7,500 quotas, what they said, 7,500 for option one. And I said, well, we could do more than that. If we were realistically going to open a fishery, we could go to 10,000. And I can't tell you who, but a representative from the state of California said, well, how could we do that? And I had to explain of how the contribution rates are broken down over the all stock catch over the historical average and you know what that means and what that means everybody is the numbers every year when you have a total number so if you have 10,000 fish what is going to be the distribution the breakdown the pie chart of those 10,000 well in the last few years 44 to 48 percent have been a colony so that's why I said 7,500 isn't realistic because if you're only trying to kill maximum 5,000 sack fish 
sack of feather American, uh, then if you're only trying to kill 5,000, you could probably have a 10,000 quota. And they agreed. And they were like, well, thank you. That's, that's very, very nice. And it's like, well, it's realistic. I mean, it's, yeah, the model will allow you to do that. You'll, you'll try to, you'll, you'll, you'll try to, uh, have a fishery that exists because the numbers will allow it to exist. That doesn't calculate the model error. That doesn't calculate uh, the uh, inefficiencies, the mortality, the pre-spawn mortality, the water conditions, the habitat conditions. It doesn't consider the water condition three years ago of what it was like for migrants that migrated out. I mean, that's the number one issue to look at. Thank you, Tom Cannon, for always pointing that out. Scientist, good man. He, you know, he's been pointing that out for years and nobody's been paying attention to that, you know, looking at the environmental stressors and the conditions and he's dead on accurate. I mean, you know, and the reality is, is that we're just not telling people the truth. And there's a lot of people that live on the ocean and on the coast that want to go fishing. And so there are people that are going to basically tell their membership and tell their people what they want to hear rather than what they need to hear. And I'm sorry, but I'm never going to lie to you all. I'm just never going to do it. I'm sorry. I, I don't care if you're a member. I don't care if you join for 20 bucks. If you want to, go to ncgasa.org. There's my plug. But I mean, if you want to join and you want to support us, join. Be a member because you want to be a member. I want you to be a member because you have pride in being a member because you know that this organization is going to tell you the truth and that you know that this board is going to fight for your kids and your your kids and your grandkids' future. I already lost my business because of them. I lost everything because of them. My my business is done. This is all I have is an old hat and a boat sitting in a shop. They've ruined it, folks. The river's been ruined for years. It's not like this just happened. The river has been ruined for years and they didn't listen. And so, you know, finally, you know, um, you know, we've got to just get to that point to where we're honest with each other. We're united. We have to be united as a, as a, as a community. And right now we're not right now. You have the entire charter boat fleet saying we should close the season. The entire charter boat fleet. I mean, they're not even going to make it through this year. People are going to lose their boats and they're still saying close it so that my kid can catch a salmon recreationally someday. But I'll lose my business. I'll lose my boat. I'll lose my home. But close it so that my kid, when I'm dead, can at least catch a salmon. That's what the charter boat fleet's saying. The commercial fleet, same thing. Close it. That's what the commercial fleet's saying. It's ridiculous trying to open it on these abundances. We can't open it on these abundances. And then the commercial fleet said, if you open it, we want our section of our share of fish that we're allotted every year in the model, we want those to go towards escapement to the river. And they had the biggest piece of the pie. They have the most to lose. They're the ones that bring all the fish to your restaurants. They're the ones that bring all of the, you know, you hear that in the background? That's the sound of freedom. Um, they, they are the ones that are basically, you know, responsible. I mean, I just don't know how. It just frustrates me inside because I've worked in a, very unorthodox manner in the last few years because I'm so frustrated, but I'm so emotionally struck because of what they did to all of us and, and they continue to do. And right now there's 390 comments under agenda item number E2, <laughs> 390 comments. I've never seen that many comments ever all saying to open the season. And I see all these names and I don't even know if they're real. You don't, you see, go read them. We'll post the link. We'll post the link. Go, go read them. They're there. 390 something comments. I commented personally, but 
I'm going to comment in person as well, but I, I, I want you all to go comment there. And we, we're putting the comment in the chat. And if you, if you don't know where to comment, go to pcouncil.org. You can comment there. Uh, click, but you have to do it by tomorrow of your choice, whatever it is. If you're an old one guy and you're listening to me right now and you're one of those people, I'm not mad at you. I know you want to fish. I do too. We all want to fish. But you need to be realistic on at least being willing to have a conversation and back your argument up of why we should open up a season for Alt-1. Rather than just, I want to fish. Because the data is going to, they're going to give us enough rope to hang ourselves. And I'm really, really scared. I'm really scared of an ESA listing. It's going to come. And when it does, then I'm going to be here saying, I told you so. But that doesn't make me happy. That's going to put tears in my eyes. Because then they're, they're only going to take it one way. They're going to close it down forever or they're going to have to make a mark selective hatchery program where you're only going to be able to keep clipped fish. And then they're going to tell you all, oh yeah, clipped fish is the way. We'll get you back on the water, everybody. Just vote for the mark selective fisheries, just like Washington and Oregon. Go down that rabbit hole. That's a worse situation than we're in right now with closures. We go down that rabbit hole which it's going to come. Just mark my words. You heard it here first. There's going to be a few individuals and maybe a group that are going to be pushing. Open the fishery. Mark select only. That's fine. There's people that disagree with me on, that, on, my, on my comments. That's fine. You can disagree with me. We're in America. You have the right to disagree with me. Actually, I tell my board all the time, I hope you disagree with me more so that hopefully I get more dialogue out of people. If you can't argue your point, then you don't have a point. My point is the future. I want all of you to fish in the future. I've already lost it all, guys. I know what that feels like. Government agencies don't. Government employees don't. Their pension's the same. Their salary's the same every two weeks. Still no disaster relief. So those of you that are just recreational anglers saying, oh yeah, they want to close it so they get paid again. Yeah, we didn't get paid last year, so not one dollar. So... They cut it all the way down 88%. So they wanted to offer my guys 3,000 bucks that lost 150 to 200 thousand dollars. Yeah, here's three grand. That would have what it came down to. Yeah, a lot of help. Uh, was there any unemployment from Gavin Newsom? That's the only name I'll mention today. Was there any unemployment from EDD? Nope, not even an option. Sorry, we mismanaged your fisheries that you rely on and you formed and took all the risk and. Bought million dollar boats, hundreds of thousands of dollars in boats and equipment and tackle and investments and business for California tourism and California economy. Paid your taxes, paid your property taxes, your luxury taxes, your boat taxes, your guide licenses, your Coast Guard inspections and all of your stuff, but uh, no money for you. So I just want to make that clear too. There'd been no money, none. They're estimating that maybe some money will go, will get to the people by 2025. Maybe. From last year. January 1st is when they're thinking about applications. Possibly might even open. Anyway, make sure you go to the pcouncil.org website. It's going to be on here. The PFMC, tomorrow is the last date, April 2nd. You have to comment. Um, I'd like to see more comments under Agenda E6. I'd really like to see more on the final uh, adoption. You can comment on all of them, only one per one per item. Like you can comment on, on, on each, but you could go to E6. That's the final adoption if you want there, or if you want to be on E5, you can, or E4, but E2 has already got 400 comments, basically telling them to catch every last tail in the ocean. Um, 
because there's no reality. But there's a quota system on that, which is going to be an interesting deal, too. And that also sets precedence for the future. Do you want to be on a recreational quota fishery for the rest of your life? Well, if it opens on a quota, you're setting precedence. For those of you that don't know what that means, that's like when your parents used to tell you not to cry wolf because then no one would believe you when you really did cry wolf. Understand? Yeah, it's frustrating. I just I came out to get a breath of fresh air off my last Zoom meeting and got a couple other meetings today, but I just am really uh, frustrated that I'm seeing just, you know, greed. I mean, we all want to catch a fish, don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sit there and advocate for something that I know that is not real. So I'm always going to tell you the truth and where we're at with salmon and we're in deep trouble. And, um, you know, we're not in deep trouble to probably make 122. We'll make 122,000. And that's what certain people are telling people like, hey, you know, you can uh, you can be the 122 uh, we could, you know, even though, you know, we can go, we can go catch 20, 30,000 fish, you know, we can catch 20,000. Because you open the ocean, then I'm going to advocate to open the river. And we already know we can't fish the Sacramento River because it's in such bad shape. We would not do such a unmoral or unjust thing. My guides are all said, absolutely not. I mean, we would never even ask for that. So, I mean, but if they're going to open the ocean, then that means that I'm going to have to advocate to open the American and the Feather, which have healthier stocks, but their numbers count against the Sacramento Index, which then affects us in the future if we don't make our goals. So anyway, those are the risks. Those are the reality. So vote how you want to vote. I won't tell you how to vote. That's not the type of organization this is. Tell you, you can do whatever you want to do. You want to vote alt one, vote alt one. You want to fish, 10,000 quota, vote alt one. You want a 50 50 sharing agreement and a 6,500 quota, smaller quota, a little more conservative, vote alt two. Uh, you want to be ultra conservative um, and close the season, vote alt three in the ocean. So those are your three votes, and you could do whatever you like. But please make sure you get it done today or tomorrow. It has to be done by tomorrow. Put your comments in there of whatever you would like. And, um, you know, I, uh, I hope some people understand the reality of the situation that we're in. You know, I mean, realistically, could we go catch 10,000 fish um, and shut the season down? No commercial fleet, just a recreational fleet, small 10,000 fish. Like one three-day opener, like in June. <laughs> yeah, we can make the model do that for you all if that's what you all say to do. Um, but if we do that, you're going to be the ones looking in your kids' eyes saying that we were greedy in 2024 instead of being conservative and looking after our kids' future, and our own future, but the kids' future, because if that stock gets listed, it's never coming off the list. ESA will suck it up, and it will be done. So anyway, this is your chance today and tomorrow. Make sure you go comment at the council, and uh, this is my last meeting at the council officially. Uh, salmon season, I've been there for six years, and uh, I'm two, three-year terms, and I'm officially going to be done after this season-setting process. This will be my sixth year. I will still be engaged. I will still be going to the council as a member of the public, as the president of this organization, but I won't be sitting in that seat any longer. Um, I'll let somebody else go do it and uh, deal with all the headaches and living away from your kids and family for eight days in March and eight days in April in different cities and different states and... Uh, get to have everybody else politic you and uh, lie to you and uh, and then I'll get to fly in and uh, just t tell you tell you truth. <laughs> so uh, we're looking for somebody that wants to serve and um, that knows the river and understands the situation and the reality and is not going to just, 
you know, go out there for a one season banger. Um, but, uh, really, really engaged with, uh, this process and we always will be on this organization and we appreciate all everyone's support. You know, if you're not a member, go to ncgasa.org and, uh, please, th that link will be on the comments and on this post title. I'm going to go through the, uh, comments right now, respond to any of the comments. If there's any questions, I always answer questions. So if you've got any questions, type them in the chat right now and I'll go to those questions real quick try to respond to those as best I can and I uh, look forward to seeing you all online and at least listening in like a podcast at least to the council starting on April 6th Saturday um, and that will be uh, agenda E1 and E2 I think those will be the first two salmon agenda items on Saturday um, in Seattle but you can listen on Ring Central the the app but Go to our website. We'll be posting all on the social media channel um, and our Instagram. So you'll be able to find it all wherever you're there. So let's go through it. So yes, I do answer questions. Uh, do they discuss bycatch rates? Yes, G Jim uh, Emery. Great question. Uh, they did. Um, and they constantly do. Um, the halibut committee is in ground fish. And they discuss a lot of the bycatch and the troll and the dragger fleets and, and that. And so on and so forth. Uh, George Bradshaw. Uh, our commercial rep for the Salmon Advisory Subpanel uh, engages on that front and brings that data to the Salmon Advisory Subpanel, as well as uh, the uh, Oregon and Washington fleet do as well and give us that data. So uh, I don't want to get down into the weeds about bycatch, but there is bycatch of Chinook salmon. Um, primarily, I st the stuff that concerned us the most, if you want just like a, like a level of priority of, of concerning, was Klamath stocks that were getting caught off the Oregon coast. Um, there's a lot of bycatch in some of those years on some of those stocks when we had lower abundances. So that was kind of the concern. Um, Sacramento code wire tags or others haven't shown up in, you know, in a significant number yet. The stocks have basically been depleted from red dewatering in river from lack of proper water management and lack of mitigation um, from the state and federal government of uh, raising enough fish to compensate um, for all of these losses and to try to rebuild. Uh, they should have listened in 17 and started rebuilding immediately in 18. If they would have, we would have been out of it by now, but now they're just waking up and now they're going to throw all sorts of money at it this year. They Governor threw fifty million at it, which is just an emotional response, so that voters this year in twenty twenty four say, "Oh, he cares about salmon. Look at that." <laughs> but you know, turn turning your head, uh, you know, we give billions to <laughs> non citizens and everything else in the state. So I'll just say that uh, you know, not to get into politics, but the amount of money that was thrown at salmon was crumbs um, to fix a problem. So. Um, Hopefully that answers it for you. Uh, a lot of people are frustrated at the management right now of our state and all political parties, both sides. Uh, Mark Mueller, hey buddy, I hope you're doing well. Uh, but we shouldn't if we're going to hurt the industry as a whole. Yeah, I think you're talking about fishing, I agree. Hey Tommy Trujillo, I hope you're well. Yeah, ESA is not what we want. Um, yeah, Larry Nevels, uh, any news on numbers below 300,000 has led to bad. History has shown that. It's all about the water quality and data shows it. Uh, the drought was detrimental and the management, the cooperation. Yeah, I agree. I agree there. And you're, you're correct, Larry. The stat is, is that every time we've opened a ocean fishery under 300,000 Sacramento abundance, we have failed to meet the minimum escapement goal of 122,000. And so therefore, you know, that shows us, you know, and it's happened like four or five times in the last 12 years, I think. Um, so have to go back and look at my own chart, but it's on our website. You can go look at it. All the data's there. Just go, just go find it. But you know, six out of eight years before last year, 75% of the time we failed to meet 122,000. We weren't managing correctly. So where does that fall on? Well, it falls on your council members that represent through the P council, through this process. So that's why this is so important for you all to go comment today and tomorrow of what you want, because 75% of the time, they're just going to go kill them and we're not going to let them come home. And we don't let them come home and we're not going to let them make babies. 
We're not going to have fish in three years. So we've got to make sure that we are doing the right thing and stewards of the resource. So uh, moving on. Um, David Flowers, I want to fish also, but I want salmon to survive. It's not looking good. Thank you, James, for your passion. You're welcome, David. Thank you very much for the comment, and thanks for your support. If you're a, I believe you're a member, thank you very much. Stay out of the wind. Sorry, Walter. Yeah, it just the wind started picking up a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, Mark Mueller, you're making a non emotional argument because you're trying to keep it alive and here for our grandchildren. You're doing great work. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that comment. What up, Joe? Hope you're doing well. If you want to get on a good sturgeon boat, uh, make sure you call Golden State Sport Fishing. Old Joe. Joe G, what's up? Uh, make sure you go jump on his boat. They're roping sturgeon right now, man. It's great, great fishing right now. Get out there, you know. They're about to list that species, too. A lot of people think that they just don't want us on the water. Um, yeah, Kenny, I won't read that comment, but uh, you're navigating upstream. Kristen Duvall, thank you, James, for the stewardship or the stalwart determination and continued efforts. Situation stinks to high heaven. You're welcome, Kristen Duvall. Thank you very much. Um, look above you. Do you see a plane or something? Yeah, I was just enjoying the nice weather. Before the winter run listed, we opened February 15th south of Pigeon. Yeah, and we fished until January 16th in the Sacramento River before the fall run listing in 89, Frank. That was, that's a great comment. Yeah, I mean, that's what people don't understand, especially all the young kids that are 25, 30 years old. They're like, oh man, look at, there's like 10,000 salmon here. It's like, yeah, there used to be, you know, 500,000 salmon here. So, you know, they get all excited over seeing a couple thousand fish. And it's like, that doesn't even excite us. You know, if, for those of us that remember the old days, I mean, you were literally fishing for salmon from March 15th for springers in the river, inland, from March 15th all the way to winter run on January 16th. You only had two months off. You went duck hunting the last couple of weeks of January and took the month of February off. And then you went back fishing in March. So, you know, I mean, and that same goes for people in the ocean. South of Pigeon, February 15th, and uh, all the way until November 15th. So, it's just crazy. How is Mark Select clip fishing a bad thing? I honestly don't know. Jeremy Rarick. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Jeremy. Great question. We'll, we'll do uh, some more lives, and I'll try to start posting more stuff about Mark Selective Fisheries and what that means. But, I mean... From the, from the perspective of telling people that they can go fishing, it's a great thing because what they're going to do is just tell you, well, what we're going to do is clip, since all the fish are hatchery anyway, we're just going to go clip them all. And then you guys can go out there and then you can only keep the ones with no fins because then we know they're hatchery fish and you're not catching the natural fish. There are no natural fish. The natural fish are just hatchery fish that strayed into the river the last few years and our generation F1, F2, F3, max. And there's no, you know, Jurassic wild fish anymore, people. I mean, these, there's groups, there's other groups that are out there that are just, they're not on planet Earth when it comes to that. And they're on a political agenda to shut down hatcheries and fish farms and everything else. And the reality on that one is, I mean, how much... Do you want to go down the rabbit hole on that one? I mean, it's crazy, but uh, the reality and the truth is, is that there's a lot of groups that don't want hatcheries and they don't want your fish. And so what happens is, is that they're going to sell it to you that, oh, you know, the fish is going to get listed because they're going to, you know, try to open the fishery and they're going to let us hang ourselves. Then they're going to blame it on us. And then the environmentalists are going to list them. And then the government's going to say, well, don't worry because the community is going to be pissed. And then don't worry, we're going to go mark selective. We're going to clip all your fish and then you can go out in the ocean and catch them. So here's what's wrong with that. So they sell us the bag of goods and we all sign off on it so that we can go fishing. And then what happens is, is that the Klamath dams get removed and the fish start going into all that new water up there. And now you have 400, 500, 800 a million fish starting to rebuild in the Klamath. Naturally. Wait a second, naturally? Well, they're, they're all hat 
tree fish that are swimming up there or a lot of natural fish that are in the tributaries. Either way, it doesn't matter. But naturally, all of them have all this new habitat now. And if they have good water, well, now all those fish are going to have fins. And now you're going to have 800,000 or a million fish swimming in the ocean. And every time you catch one of those on your boat in the ocean, oh, sorry, it has a fin. That's a 50-pound fish. Sorry, it has a fin. You can't keep it. Throw it back. It's illegal. Taking that away from you. We took that right away from you. Stripping your freedoms one at a time. Slowly, death by a thousand cuts. Mark Selective Fisheries are like 10-round 10 10 magazines. <laughs> they don't prevent anything. Mark Selective Fisheries then, so then you're going to be upset because now you've got millions of fish swimming around the ocean, but you can only catch this small percentage of them if it happens that way. That's the negative con. The positive is, is you get to go fishing immediately. You get to go try. But the reality, when you talk to a lot of the people in the north, is that they'll end up going and, you know, hooking 10, 12 fish in a day, but they only can keep four. So what's that hook and mortality rate? You know, the ones that you hook and you have to let go because they have a fin. Well, percentage of those are dying. So now we're killing those natural stock. Well, that leads to the argument, why not just keep it? Well, that's why we're saying that Mark Selective Fisheries are not good. On top of that, then what happens is the worst thing. So that you're following me, hopefully you're still on this listing. The worst thing that happens is then what happens is then you get a big, you get a good survival rate of all your hatchery fish and they all survive really well from trucking. And then they all come back into the river and the environmentalists go like this and they go, whoa, look at the river. Oh my goodness, they all have no fins. Well, yeah, they've always been the same fish, but now that 100% of them are clipped, now you can see it. Because before, it's been 25% so that you couldn't see it. <laughs> and now when you see it, then they're going to say, oh, I can't do that. PHOS, proportional hatchery origin spawner, has to be 10% or less. We cannot have more than 10% of the hatchery fish on the spawning grounds. Well, how do you manage that? Well, you lower production in your hatcheries ladies and gentlemen. You don't believe me? Go look at the Columbia River. You don't believe me? Go look at the Puget Sound. You don't believe me? Go look at Idaho. You don't believe me? Go look at other fisheries. It's there. And that's what happens. So the greed to go fishing immediately on a Mark Selective. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Clip them, clip them, clip them, and we'll go. They'll sell it to you so that you take the bait. Real fishermen smell it before they take the bait. You gotta, you gotta think, folks. There's long-term plans by some individuals, and there are some people falling right into the trap, agnostic, meaning they don't know. And there are some people that are just driving the bus. There's a few bus drivers need to get called out. It's sad. Um, I know the truth. I understand the system. I understand the entire system for salmon, Chinook salmon in California. I understand it very well off Oregon. I understand it very well off Washington. I understand it in Idaho inland. I understand some rivers in Oregon inland. I'm probably weakest at inland Washington rivers and my knowledge. But it's very hard when people that are lying to our community because we're a community that's who we are as fisher men and women and families businesses we're a community we got to be together if we're not together and united and we're not honest with each other we're gonna we're gonna hang ourselves and we're gonna go right down this road mark my words i think it might be too late 
I think the school bus has got a brick on it right now, and it's got the salmon community inside the bus, and we are driving right towards that cliff. We'll see what happens. CDFW might not even be able to monitor even opening a fishery this year. I think that's the biggest concern. You open the whole state for three days in June, how many people are going to go? And you can only kill 10,000 statewide? How do you monitor that? People are voting alt one like there's really going to be 16 days of fishing. There's not 16 days. It's going to be one opener. One three to five day opener. And there are people that want to vote for that. So that's fine. If that's what you want to vote for, vote for it. But at least understand I'm giving you the, under, the knowledge, the data, the science behind your thing so that you can make that decision. And if you say, I don't care, okay. But at least you understand you're not going to be fishing 16 days i can tell you that <laughs> even though alt one says that um anyhow uh make sure you get there april 1st april 2nd tomorrow's the last day i'm going to read the rest of these questions hopefully that answered mark selective fisheries the best my ability agenda 21 was signed on to 1992 jp pal um frank we need to rebuild the weak stocks with wild brood stock yes i agree jeff i left a comment but i'm pretty naive well i appreciate you but your honesty i mean hey you're honest um you know uh you can only make one comment so it's not like you can you know flood and you know their system they protect it that way so um jp powell wild vote may i recommend the book of committee of 300 thank you there's the link. Uh, thank you, Sir Dylan. Thanks for your hard work. See the salmon copy. Um, Dylan, if you're there, please make sure you go comment. Thank you so much. Tell it like it is. Matt Thomas. Yes, sir, I will, brother. NorCal Fish Hounds. Hello. Save the stock to help the future. Yeah, trying to keep your business going, sir. Thank you so much. I think in 95, I may be wrong, but we had 900,000. Uh, so Matt Thomas, uh, 20, 2002 was 900,000 fish were in the Sacramento river system. It comprised of 775,000 adults and there was over a hundred and something thousand jacks, uh, a couple hundred thousand jacks. It was insane. So yeah, there was almost, there was 900,000 fish in the Sacramento feather Yuba and American river alone. Then you had your own motor shed. 95 actually was, I think, a lower year, actually. And then it started coming back up, 96, 97, 98. I think 95 just started to come out because we were coming out of that early drought. I, it was the drought when I was a kid, late 80s, early 90s. Um, and that drought, I remember <laughs> taking military showers and stuff from the family because uh, everyone was so concerned over our water back then. Um yeah, check out our film on YouTube. If you haven't yet, go subscribe. Smash the button on YouTube. Subscribe. Uh, go watch Long Live the King. Um, there's a Terry Smith. Tell him, James. Mark Selective, no good. We as Washington fishermen. Yep, there it is. And they cut your production. One big booby trap. Yep, there it is. Keep it closed. Quit being greedy. Save the salmon for the kids. Dustin Miller. Hey, bud. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, please go comment. I mean, whatever your comments are, go comment on there. Um, whatever they might be. I hope everybody um, understands the situation we're in. It's frustrating. It's better than last year according to their numbers, but it's not sustainable to go fishing. I mean, we need abundances over 500,000. I mean, next year, there's, the abundance will probably be in the 300,000s, and I can see opening a fishery and being responsible and still making, you know, goals. I can see that happening. Very realistic, but 213,000. That's the second worst abundance that we've had ever in the history of the river since the last closure. Not the history all time, but in the, because I've only looked at the numbers since 08, but in the last, you know, 17 years, this is the second worst abundance, lowest abundance, second lowest. Last year was the lowest. So we're in trouble, guys. We're in a lot of trouble. And we knew this. We just didn't know how bad it was going to be. It was worse last year than we thought. And that's why it's hard to believe the numbers they keep putting out. 
Um, it's all guesstimates, folks. There's no actual hard data that 133,000 fish were in the river last year. It's all expanded by 30%. They physically probably only put their hands on like 70, 80,000 fish total. And then they say, oh, there's probably this many out in the river. They do an expansion. They have a model. Well, we've never got into that model. We've never started looking at how inaccurate that model is. The carcass model. Maybe it's something that we need to get into because it's inaccurate also. Anyhow, um, thanks everybody. Appreciate you all. Go to ncgasa.org. Sign up for 20 bucks today. Become a member. Get all of our emails. Be kept up to date on everything that's going on. Um, I'll see you all up in Seattle and, uh, my live videos will be limited up there, but I'll do, a, I'll do one or two, but it'll basically, uh, be basically just telling you what's, what's transpired. So look for my live video. I'll try to do one like Sunday, maybe Sunday night. And then I'll do another one on like Wednesday morning or something like that right at the end. So I'll give you kind of an update of what we hear from guidance from federal and state government. And then I'll do another one for thing. But anyway, I appreciate all your support. I continue and continued support and uh, hope you all had a great Easter and uh, we will talk to you all very soon. Thank you all. Bye.